the heart is the driving force of human life itself. It skips a beat when we're inspired. It helps us individually get to our destinations. It represents the love center. It can inspire us to great heights. Yet, for something deeply embedded into the thing we call life, we find our purpose, our very meaning, and then we go on to share it with the rest of the world. We're expanding what's possible to support the growth and enhancement of a better future. We want to help you look outside of what you know and towards a bright future. Our gift is the formula for getting your business noticed and to help you get ahead of the game. Delhi Sultanat. Introduction. This of downfall of the Delhi Sultanate. The Delhi Sultanate or the Turco-Afghan Sultans of Delhi ruled India for 320 years from 1206 AD. But their rule ceased in the beginning of the 16th century AD. The major cause of their downfall was their despotic nature. They ruled only with the sword and could not win the confidence of the people. Most of the sultans were intolerant towards Hindus. They destroyed the temples. Moreover, Hindus were forced to pay jazia, a religious tax for the practice of their religion. One major setback was that most of the sultans were pleasure-loving and weak rulers. The nobles were opportunists. They themselves tried to become sultans whenever they got the opportunity. Besides, their army was also unorganized and indisciplined. Mostly the sultans depended upon the army of their loyal nobles, who were actually not dependable. The vastness of the empire and lack of proper and faster means of communication was also the reason to make it difficult to control. There was no definite system of succession. Only sword could decide the succession. Thus there were continuous wars and intrigues for the throne, which made the empire weak. The Mongols also made the Delhi Sultanate weak by their continuous invasions. Timur plundered the people of Delhi and its temples. Babur ended the Sultanate in Delhi by defeating Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Panipat in 1526 AD. Causes under Delhi Sultan The Sultan was considered as the head of the Delhi Sultanate. His word was regarded as the law. He was also the chief executive, the highest judicial authority and the commander-in-chief of the army. He considered himself a part of the Islamic world. He was advised by the chief Ghazi. The officials maintained all records and they also controlled revenue. The Vazir was the main figure in the administration. He was also the head of the revenue department. There were three types of taxes on the cultivation called Kharaj and amounting to about 50% of the peasant's produce, on cattle and on houses. The Bakshi was the paymaster of the army. The Ghazi was the chief judge who used to give advice to the Sultan on religious issues. Several other officers acted as the administrative heads of various departments. Justice was based on the holy laws in the case of Muslims. But in the case of Hindus, the Sultan did not interfere in the traditional laws. Hindus were allowed to settle their cases in their own panchayat. The whole empire was divided into a number of provinces. The provinces were divided into shikhs. The shikhs were divided into parganas or 
group of villages. Cities were divided into sectors. Each city was under the charge of two officials who were responsible to the chief city administrator. The village was the smallest unit of the administration. The Patwari and the Mushrif or the accountant were the chief village officials. Villagers were left undisturbed to manage their own affairs independently. The Mokaddam or the headman was the head of the village administration. To maintain the army, Ikta system was adopted. Military commanders were appointed as governors and granted a piece of land. The system to grant a piece of land to a military officer and allow him to keep a portion of the revenue collection from it instead of giving cash salary was called the Ikta system. The country was divided into Iktas, that is, tracts of territories. Example, a village or moor. These Iktas were handed over to military officers called Iktadars. Every Iktadar was to provide troops to the king. They were to maintain law and order in the Ikta and also to collect revenue from it. All expenditure of this work, including maintenance of soldiers, was to be met out of this revenue. A certain percentage was allowed to the Iktadar for the personal expenditure. The balance was sent to the Sultan as the revenue collected from the Ikta. This sum was fixed and was to be sent annually. The Iktadar had to keep a detailed account of the income and expenditure of the Ikta under his charge. In 